joining with us. The service will be available on YouTube later this afternoon and uh, on Dialer Service at 6 p.m. Thank you all for being with us. It's great to have your company as together we worship and give thanks to God for all his blessings. Reverend Adam is having a well-deserved Sunday off, so I shall be leading our worship today. My thanks as always to John as he looks after the technology to bring the service to you. And during the service, John will also be reading from God's word and leading us in prayer. So thank you, John, in advance for that. Just a few notices. Um, our midweek Lenten uh, lecture divina, or sorry, not Lent, Lenten now, or Lenten now is that's past, but we've continued on with the lecture divina Bible study, P R A Y, and we hope to uh, have our next on Wednesday, the 20th of April at 8 pm. Now, if you would like to join with us, you can email um, uh, Reverend Adam there at the address that's on your screen and he will send you the link then to join in. Um, just a small um, notice about when we return to worship. We have not been given a date as yet by the government but um, the Reverend Adam would presume that when we do come back that it will be much the same as where we left off uh, before Christmas with two meter social distancing and wearing masks and no singing. But I will keep you updated as things progress and the government and the Church of Ireland guidelines are updated. Um, the notice sheet and the children's resource sheet is available on the parish website page and also the vaccine rollout information for 65 to 69 year olds. And this information is also available on the HSE website. So let us just still our minds for a few moments before we come before God to worship him. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exalt in you I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. You gave Christ as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of the Spirit, you established us as a royal priesthood. As you call us into your marvelous light, may our lives bear witness to your truth and our lips never cease to proclaim your place. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we say together, blessed be God forever. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us come to God seeking his forgiveness. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us 
and we say together, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. By failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by the temptations in the world around us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. Almighty God, who in Jesus has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, Strengthen us to go, do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 4. Lift up the light of your kindness upon us, O Lord. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put your gladness in my heart more than, when grain, more than grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. Amen. We now praise God in song, and our first hymn is God Forgive My Sin in Jesus' Name.
the collect for today, the third Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. John will now read for us um, our first reading from the book of Acts. Thank you, John. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we made him walk? The God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate. Though he had decided to release him, but you rejected the holy and the righteous one, and asked him to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is true Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24, beginning at verse 36. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and be raised from the dead on the third day 
and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of our mouths and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In today's reading from Luke's gospel, we read the story of Jesus appearing to the disciples on that first day, Easter day evening. Luke narrates that earlier that morning, some of the women who had gone to the tomb to anoint Jesus's body to their, found to their dismay and amazement that it wasn't there. The tomb was empty. And while they were still wondering about it, angels appeared to them and told them that Jesus was alive. He had risen. So naturally, they hurried off to tell the disciples, but they didn't believe them. They said they were talking nonsense. But Peter, being Peter, his inquisitiveness got the better of him. And he went to the tomb, only to find it as the women had said. Luke then goes on to tell us the story about two followers of Jesus who were walking from Jerusalem along the road to Emmaus. They were discussing all that had happened in Jerusalem over the past few days. While on their journey, they were joined by a man, a stranger, someone they didn't know. As they continued walking together, the stranger joins in their conversation and noticing how dejected, dejected they look, wants to know what is troubling them. They are totally amazed that he appears to be quite unaware of all that has just happened in Jerusalem about Jesus of Nazareth, how he had been crucified, laid in a tomb. And when some woman went to anoint his body, they found the tomb empty and the angels told them that Jesus had risen from the dead. He was alive. The stranger whom we know was Jesus reminds them then of everything that is written in the scriptures that must be fulfilled about the Messiah, that he must suffer and rise from the dead, but they still didn't recognize him as their Lord. It was only when they invited him to stay overnight and he joined them for supper, when he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to them. Then the sudden realization of who the stranger was dawns on them. But as soon as they realize it, it was Jesus. And before they could say a word, he vanishes from their sight. Full of excitement and joy, they come racing back to Jerusalem to tell the 11 disciples what had happened, how they had encountered the living Lord Jesus. We re then read the wonderful experience of how Jesus appears without warning among the disciples and is standing in their midst and calmly says to them, peace be with you. I imagine with all the emotions going on in their minds at that time, peace was not one of them. Luke tells us they were startled and terrified and no wonder, I expect you and I would be too if we saw someone we knew had died suddenly standing among us and talking to us. That last week of Jesus' life had been quite a roller coaster for the disciples. It had turned their world upside down. The disciples had witnessed the death of someone they loved, and now they lived in the fear for their own lives as well. They had given up everything to follow Jesus, their jobs, 
their family life, all that was familiar to them. And now he was gone. How different it was a week ago when Jesus had ridden into Jerusalem on a donkey and all the people welcomed him, joyfully praising God. But then how quickly everything changed. The chief priests were plotting to have Jesus killed for quite some time. And over the space of the next few days, they turned the people completely against him. The growing tension became quite evident to the disciples as they gathered in the upper room to celebrate the Passover and share a meal together. Jesus again talked, as he had indeed done many times before, about his upcoming betrayal, trial and death. But now there seemed to be an urgency in his voice, changing the atmosphere in that room to one of apprehension. I am sure the disciples would have sensed that life as they had known it for the past three years was about to drastically change. But I imagine they had no idea just how dramatically it would change. And shortly afterwards, they watch in bewilderment as Jesus is betrayed by one of his own, arrested and put on trial. And then when it seemed that things couldn't get any worse, Jesus is condemned to death and crucified. Following Jesus' death, it wasn't unexpected that the disciples were in complete disarray. They had lost their master. They had, sorry, they had just seen their master, their teacher, the one who they had given up everything for to follow, put to death. Is it any wonder they were afraid? They were probably thinking, it's just a matter of time until the authorities come for us and we will surely die. After all, we are Jesus' disciples and are well known to the chief priests. So they hid away in fear, overwhelmed with grief, not knowing what to do next, not knowing if they would be arrested or how long they would need to stay in hiding before it would be safe for them to come out again. And not knowing especially what to do now that Jesus was no longer around. A lot of confusion and uncertainty existed in their words. In fact, we are told in John 20, 19, how the disciples were hiding in a room behind a locked door because they were so afraid. But perhaps they thought all was not lost. A small ray of light was beginning to penetrate their minds. The women had told them the tomb was empty. And now they had heard from the two disciples who had walked with Jesus and had a conversation with him on the road to Emmaus and how he revealed himself through the breaking of bread. Perhaps Jesus was alive. And suddenly, to their dismay, there he was, standing alongside of them, eating some fish, talking and sharing with them what was written in the scriptures about him. Jesus was fully aware of the turmoil and anxiety that had taken the disciples' hearts captive. He loved them unconditionally and knew each one intimately. He knew they were ter terrified and he wanted above all else to dispel their fears and calm their emotions. So many times in life, we are like the disciples, locked away because we are afraid. There are many situations, problems in life that have the potential to produce fear in our hearts and minds. When we are afraid, we tend to do what the disciples did. We tend to hide away and keep to ourselves. Yet Jesus, knowing how we feel, can show up as he did with the disciples to give us peace in our situation. And in fact, he encourages it. Here is what St. Paul says in Philippians 4, 
verse 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, one thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I like the way the message a Bible puts it. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let your petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ dispels the worry at the center of your life. God loves us as he did the early disciples unconditionally and is intimately concerned with every detail of our lives. These verses encourage us that when worldly worries and concerns robs us of experiencing God's peace, Paul encourages us to pray and hand over our anxiety to the Lord, to allow his peace to dwell in our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, that God longs to hold us close to himself. Today, we are living in a world that is experiencing a pandemic. We are living through a period of unprecedented disruption, chaos and anxiety. The people we hold most dear, most dear have been separated from us and our normal way of life has dramatically changed. The events of the last year has caused a major crisis in our health system, an economic downturn and social unrest. Yet in the midst of it all, we find a promise in John 14 verse 27, which Jesus made to his disciples at the Last Supper, which is as much needed today in 2021 as it was back over 2000 years ago. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Peace that the world gives is dependent on the times when life is good and there are no problems, health worries or financial hardship and we feel in complete control of our lives. However, the peace that the world gives can abruptly vanish and we can find ourselves going through times of illness and anxiety when life struggles get on top of us. The Bible is filled with verses upon verses that can bring us peace in the middle of chaos, worry, fear, and even death. Jesus explained to the disciples that as his followers, they would suffer hardship, that they would not be immune to the challenges of life, but they would not be left on their own. Jesus promised to send them a helper in the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us the peace we experience as believers comes from the power of the Holy Spirit working in our hearts and lives. When we have Jesus at the center of our lives, we have the gift of his peace in our hearts. It is not that we will be free from the trials of life that invariably will come our way. But as Christians, we can have that inner peace which by the power of the Holy Spirit produces a quietness, a calmness within us that gives us the assurance that God is in control. The famous evangelist, the late Dr. Billy Graham put it this way, for the Christian, peace is not simply the absence of conflict or any other artificial state the world has to offer. Rather, it is the deep abiding peace only Jesus Christ brings to the heart. When we accept Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within our hearts. 
and we can have a sense of peace in our lives. The peace that God gives us through his spirit is described in the Bible as a peace that passes all human understanding. Life can be unpredictable. Joys and sorrows, blessings and difficulties can come unexpectedly. Our life's dreams and plans can change in an instant. We all know this is true. There will always be storms to face and sometimes there will even be tragedies. But when we have placed our faith in a loving God and trust in his divine help, we can confidently say that we are not on our own and are surrounded by his peace. I was recently given a lovely book of daily devotions entitled, entitled Jesus Calling, written by a young lady called Sarah Young. The devotions are based on Bible verses and are written as if it were Jesus who is talking directly to the reader. The following is a transcript, uh, the following is a transcript taken from the book. Peace be with you. Ever since the resurrection, this has been my watchword to those who yearn for me. As you sit quietly, let my peace settle over you and enfold you in my loving presence. To provide this radiant peace for you, I died a criminal's death. Receive my peace abundantly and thankfully. I help you cope with whatever is before you. This is how I live in you and work through you. This is the way of peace. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in God our Father. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. John will now lead us in prayer. Thank you, John. Just bear with us. It takes a wee minute to, for John to get to the other podium. Lord, let us pray. Today, Lord, within the whole wide Anglican communion, churches across the whole world are praying for us, the Church of Ireland, and the Most Reverend John McDowell, Archbishop of Armagh and Primate of all Ireland. And within our own diocese, we join with churches across the Diocese of Derry and Rathol in praying for the parishes of Kilway, Tamlach O'Quilly Upper and Tamlach O'Quilly Lower. Reverend Gary Miller and the diocesan readers there of Mr. Albert Moore and Mr. Timothy Dowie. And within our own group of parishes, we pray for our rector, Reverend Adam Puller. And grant unto your servants, Lord, locally, nationally, internationally, wisdom, patience, and the peace of knowing you, Lord, so they can fully follow your path and lead others onto that glorious road of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the past 20 odd years of peace within this troubled land. 
and in this year of centenaries, bring peace, bring reconciliation to those who are bringing Northern Ireland once more onto a path of violence and hatred. And across the world, Lord, look of compassion on the many countries where innocents suffer, authority is abused, and often unjust. We continue to pray for the Holy Land, the lands of the Middle East, North Korea, Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, Pakistan, and Nigeria. Some of the many countries of this world where Christians suffer for their faith. Where there is gender-based violence. Where peace is often lacking. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all healing, we thank you for the gifts you have bestowed on all those who care for the sick, for doctors, for nurses, for care assistants, for home help, for those families and friends who care for neighbors and relations, for scientists and researchers who are working to control disease and seeking cures and treatments, But Lord, be with those known to us, those who are either preparing for to undergo treatment, who are suffering diseases yet undiagnosed, for those receiving treatment in hospital, for those recovering in their own homes. Today, we pray for Ryan McGuire, for Margaret Reed, for Betty Hanlon, for Jim Riley, for Jean Hanlon, and for those we name in the quietness of our own hearts. Be with them, Lord. Give them strength, give them security. Give them faith in the days and weeks to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks for the departed, Lord, you are lifted up with Christ to eternal life. Today, especially, we remember Hazel. A daughter of Kotiva Parish. Be with her family. Patton and Sinclair fam and the extended family circle as they mourn her sudden death. But in the days to come, may they rejoice in the knowledge of Christ's salvation, his risen and ascended glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we say, merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, John. We now join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue to praise God now and singing together, Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all, all generations forever and ever. Amen. As we go out into the week ahead and as people of God, let us say together, may the Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father who loved us and graciously gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage our hearts and strengthen us in every good deed and word. Amen. We shall conclude our service together by saying the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore, now and evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining with us this morning. We leave you with a few reminders of the various things that um, are coming up.